Today we're going to look around my local district and see what we can find at the side of the road. Oh, big goanna. That's a lace monitor actually. He's a beauty. He's hissing at me too. They're a fantastic lizard. They're very powerful, very strong. The first thing they do is <laughs> find the nearest tall object to climb up if they get spooked. They're up there. They hiss at you. I don't know if you can hear the hissing. Yeah, hear that? <laughs> Quite loud. He knows he's cornered because he hasn't climbed up. He hasn't climbed up the best tree. That's one lizard that you don't want to pick up. They have a very toxic bite, well it hasn't got poison in it but it's full of basically bacteria that are incredibly unhealthy for you and you, your wound goes septic and quite nasty if you don't get it cleaned up properly so you don't want to be mucking around with these lizards. I just like the, the patterns on them, I think they're, they're very pretty. They're quite a bad tempered lizard though because I have come across them a few times and they are they're they're not aggressive but they're very timid and um, if you do corner them though they'll, they'll bite you no doubt about it I've had these at one time when when I was uh, when we had chooks near the house and I wondered why the egg supply was dropping off and I realized that a lizard was going in almost every day and taking a few eggs and eventually I found the lizard and he was quite fat and overweight. It was just such a ready supply <laughs> of nutrients for him. But uh, he's not that old. He's, he's less than half grown. They get incredibly big. These ones, I've seen them up to about seven feet long and my brother's seen one that's about nine or 10 feet long. He's a very pretty creature, but he's there to stay for now until I leave. He'll probably come down once he settles down a bit. So we'll leave him alone for now. Oh, look at this. It's a big, big huntsman spider under here. See if I can get him out and we'll have a better look at it. They're one of Australia's biggest spiders. I'll poke him with this bit of bark here. They're not very aggressive and they don't have a strike down fang. They have a called a pincer system where they they bite the prey from from the sides rather than from the top. So they, they come in like that and grab their prey, not like that, like a funnel web. And this is fairly warm and active, so it'll take off. There she is. Now, this will be a female. I'll see if I can get her on my stick here. Just a little bit of bark. Here we are. Okay. Here's a pretty good... We'll get a good look at it on the ground here. Now, I know it's a female because it's got a large abdomen. And that is so she can carry her eggs and, and then her young actually ride on her back when they hatch out. So there she is. And she's a bit very wary of me. She knows she's been picked up. She doesn't like it. Anyway, these are one of my sort of favourite spiders. 
they're called a huntsman because they don't cast a web that catches things, they actually stalk them and hunt them. They can bite you, but it's not a bite that is very toxic. Now all spiders have either eight or six eyes. Now if we can get a close up of her face, I'm not sure how close we can get. I'll spin her around a bit, might be able to get it in focus there for you. I'm counting, uh, well it looks like six eyes. I'll have a look on the bigger screen later and see what she's got, but I think I can see six there. Now I actually, I actually have been bitten by one of these and it's on the lip and I have the scar to prove it I was blowing on a pipe and <laughs> it rushed out of the pipe and bit me on the lip and I was only four years old or five years old at the time so it's a stupid thing that a five year old would do but um, anyway it, it, it didn't hurt I remember it didn't hurt for long it was more of the, the wound that was the problem not the actual poison that was in the bite Anyway, some people don't think they're pretty, but I think they are. We'll let her go now, and she can go back in her her spot behind the bark. Hey, that's good. Well, one of the things that is a pretty common occurrence in Australia when you're driving around the back roads is that you run over a snake. And I've got a snake here that's just been freshly run over and I'm going to have a look at it and see what damage is done and also just to have a bit of a closer look at the animal and see what they're made up of. Alright, she's been hit on the head here and in the, in the guts, in the middle and well and truly dead. Okay, let's have a look inside the snake's mouth. She's a brown snake. You can see that black Fork tongue, that's a classic snake, a fork, a fork tongue of a snake. And up in here, we'll be able to see the, the fangs. Now, they're very well hidden inside a brown snake's mouth. That's them there, believe it or not. Very, there's a little point, you can see it. Sort of just. I can feel it with that stick. There it is. That pointy bit there that's stopping the stick from coming up, that's its fangs. And the other side, there's one over here as well. Just there. Now these snakes are. Uh, they don't bite you so easily because those fangs are so small and um, they're also sort of bent right back so when they strike you it's hard for them to actually get in through your skin so if you're wearing long pants and um, you know long sleeve shirt and those types of things it's much safer to deal with a snake if you're going to be poking around a live one that is um, but I don't like playing with live snakes that's for sure but they still give me the heebie-jeebies just because of how they look. Let's have a look how big this snake is. It's over five feet long. It's up to, up to here and me. So yeah, she's over five feet. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty good heavy sort of a snake. They get about I think the largest of them get about another two feet longer than this and um, they're very fast, very quick and they're very shy so if you leave them alone they'll leave you alone so this is not a common occurrence for me to pick up a snake Yeah. now also <laughs> be careful with them like this if their mouth is open that venom is still in their mouth and so are the fangs and if you get hit by those fangs even when they're dead they can give you a toxic bite so best off 
not to play with them too much and uh, make sure you be very careful. So don't do this at home folks, do it in the paddock. So there we'll let the ants finish her off, within a couple of days there'll be nothing left of her. There you go, common brown snake. Well, I reckon nothing could be more iconic in Australia than a lizard on a fence post. And this one, it's a bearded dragon. I've caught one of these before on camera. And today, this one's on a, whoop. It's a bit cooler today. So they come out onto the fence post and they try to pick up a bit of sunlight. And I'll just catch him. You gotta watch them though, they've got a nasty bite. There it is. Oh. Oh. Certainly the start of the warm weather. See how skinny she, I think it's, well, she or he is, very lean, very light, and it's trying to warm up on that fence post, and uh, so I can go hunting. There's that beautiful mouth again that they have, and in there, those little teeth, they're quite sharp, and the uh, the jaw is very strong. You've got to be careful not to get your fingers in there because they will draw blood. Very pretty. And that's how dark it is too. That's to attract the, well, to, to absorb the sunlight so it can warm up its blood. When they get hot, they go a lighter color because they can actually change the color of their, their skin. So right now it's a very dark gray and they can go uh, like a uh, like a light tan colour. All right, we'll let it back go. Back up on the post. Oop, doesn't want to. Never mind. <laughs> All right, we'll see what else we can find. Okay, we've just stumbled across a what's called a shingle back lizard or a stumpy tail and the reason is <laughs> they're called a stumpy tail is they got a tail that isn't doesn't look like it's been finished properly it's <laughs> shortened off so it's just a little stump and they are very cute they'll say slow Sort of a lizard compared to say something like a frill neck lizard or a bearded dragon. They're quite slow. It doesn't mean they're not strong. That jaw is actually stronger than a bearded dragon's jaw. It's a huge muscle in there if you see it open its mouth. They've got a massive muscle. I'll see if I can get it to open its mouth for you. At the moment he's just tasting the air. Oh there we go. Just tasting there by flicking his tongue. Beautiful blue tongue they've got. But you never want to get bitten by one. And sometimes they even get ticks in their ears. The ears are back here beside their head. There's a little hole there behind the, behind the head there. That's their ear and that can fill up with ticks. You might see three or four ticks in there, in that spot sometimes. It's a bit cruel. This is only a young, a young one, probably as far as weight goes I'd say it's half grown. They get about that long, like another few inches longer, but they get certainly a lot wider. And they're all about this colour on the, the eastern, southeastern side of Australia. You go to western Australia and they are much sort of, uh, sort of a brown, a lot more brown colour in them. And um, they call them bobtails over there. 
that I call them stumpies because I'm from over here. So there we are, we might get to see in its mouth now. There we go. See those big pink jaw muscles either side of its head. Amazing strength in there. And you do have to be careful not to get your fingers in there, but also at the other end you've got to be careful not to get squirted by the vent. Is out of here comes some sort of awful smelling liquid stuff. If you get it on your dear it's foul. So I've managed to escape that today. <laughs> we'll let it go and it can get back to whatever it was doing, trying to catch itself a beetle or something. Have to go, mate. Okay, now I've just Notice something else up here on the fence. Let's see if you can get, guess what this is. That's a kangaroo's lower half of its leg. And it's gotten its leg caught as it was jumping over, obviously a long time ago. They jump, they hit the top, it gets through there, and then they end up twitching their leg like that through the wire and they actually stay there until they die usually probably through lack of water or stress and it's quite cruel and you can't do anything about it I've actually cut I've cut a sheep <laughs> no, not a sheep there's a spider there actually um, I've cut a oh no, it's gone. I've cut a kangaroo off a fence I just had to cut the wire and um, set it free while it was dangling upside down. So, anyway, it's just one of the uncommon, uh, unfortunate things that happen with when men and animals cross paths with their stuff. So, anyway, I was a bit late with this one, wasn't I? There we go. Well, that's it for today's episode, folks. I hope you like seeing some more Australian native animals. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to be alerted to more videos and I'll catch you on next week's episode. Take me out in the garden with the beetles and the frost. Take me to the back door to see the